Creator View is officially on the iPad App Store. Well, it's been there for about a week, but again, stealth launch, didn't tell anybody because of the whole Google Auth stuff. That's all ironed out. We'll get back to that in a second. But in this episode, I'm gonna talk about uh, how the launch went, the App Store review process. We had two rejections, we'll talk about that. Why this is a soft launch, you know, the, the current financial status of the app in the company, the post-launch roadmap now that we're, we're official, and then some final thoughts on pricing. So anytime you submit a brand new app to the App Store, it's highly unlikely that you get approved the very first time with no issues, right? You should always budget a couple back and forth, right? A couple rejections uh, from the App Store review team. Maybe you get lucky, but again, if it's the first time the App Store has ever seen this app, I would expect a, a rejection or two at least. And that's what we got. But I'm happy to say that none of the rejections had to do with like the code crashing or something wrong with the app itself. It all had to do with like the metadata in the business. So the first rejection was about the business. Um, nothing to do with the app at all. I think they saw the price and then the paywalls and were like, wait a minute, uh, you got some explaining to do. So they sent me these questions here. I'll let you pause it to read it if you want. Uh, so I had to answer these questions. I actually wrote back with like a page and a half of very detailed answers on the business plan and what I think this product is gonna be and why I think it's valuable. A lot of the stuff I've talked about in this series already in previous episodes. Uh, so basically I submitted that. A day later, they approved that. We were back to in review, good to go. So handled the first rejection, no problem at all. Just had to make the business case for why are you charging $20 a month for this thing? It's basically what they were asking. Now the second rejection was a classic, very, very common, and that is your metadata. So for creator view, I used YouTube in the subtitle. I think I said like YouTube business tool or something like that. And then I also used it in like my keywords, you know, like YouTube business stuff, right? Um, turns out you can't use, you know, trademark stuff. I knew you couldn't do it in your actual app title. Like that's pretty obvious. Um, I didn't think you couldn't use it in your subtitle in the keywords. I mean, looking back, it says it right there in the guidelines. Anyway, super simple fix. Just removed it from my keywords, removed it from my subtitle, and we were good to go. We were approved after only those two rejections. And again, I was, Kind of surprised, but very happy that it had nothing to do with the app. No crashes, no functionality, no nothing. It was all like metadata and just general like business questions. Next up, let's talk about how the stealth launch went. Uh, it went as expected, right? I mean, it was very unlikely that like I would get a ton of downloads without telling anybody, but you never know, right? Some person finds it, they put it on TikTok, it blows up, or, or I don't know, maybe they tweet about it. Like, you just never know. Again, that's a highly unlikely scenario, but I wanted, I wanted zero downloads until I got this Google authentication taken care of. It took about, I think Creative View was on the App Store for like two days before, two or three days maybe, before the Google verification stuff came up. And looking at these charts, I think I had like four total downloads in one sale, which was me. <laughs> so uh, one of the downloads was me, so I don't know who the other three were. One of them was probably my co-founder. But anyway, bullet dodged, nothing crazy happened, which again was the most likely outcome, but you just never know sometimes. So we're good to go there. Um, and I guess this is the official like announcement video that's saying, hey, creator views on the app store, like go download it, cool, we're official. But the marketing push isn't starting quite yet. And that's why I'm calling this a soft launch. In my opinion, the product isn't launched until the Mac app is done and on the app store as well. I've said this before in previous episodes, like the Mac app is the main product, right? Because as a YouTube content creator, when I'm running my business, I'm always on my laptop or on a desktop. Rarely am I on the iPad and eventually the phone app that we're gonna make. It's always like I'm on the desktop, either editing a video or just sitting down like working. So the, the Mac app like was the main product. I started with the iPad app because I'm an iOS developer and I've never built a Mac app. So in order to get something out quick and start learning about like the product, Mac or iPad app first, and then the Mac app is coming along. So anyway, uh, another big piece of why I think this product is valuable is again, my own use case, because I am like the user, uh, is I bounce around between my, my Mac, my iMac, my iPad, uh, my phone. Like I want it to seamlessly sync across many devices. So when it's just iPad only, you're missing a big component of like the value proposition. So again, once the Mac app is done and released, that's kind of when I'll consider like the real launch and that's when the marketing push will happen. I expect that to be, I don't know, March, April sometime. So that gives us a few weeks to uh, improve on the existing features in the iPad app, really polish it up. And then the Mac app will also be out. So that's when I'll start the marketing push. Of course, I'll have to like reassess at that time to make sure we're ready for the marketing push, but that's the kind of the general plan. Okay, let's talk finances. Uh, if you remember when I first started this series, if you've been following along, I said, we're gonna talk, you know, product sales, you know, how the company's doing, finances, everything about this I'm, I'm sharing. 
So I uh, figure launch of the app, right, is a pretty good time to check in with how the finances are doing. And there's the number. We are uh, about 9,000 in the hole, just under 9,000. Now, this is just typical business startup costs, right? It costs money to start a business. So none of this is like unexpected. This is fine. So what makes up this number? Typical business stuff, right? Just, you know, the LLC formation, um, the Creator View bank account uh, has a minimum balance to not get charged the fee. I think it's like $2,000 with Chase. So I put that in there. Uh, iPad test devices, Apple developer account, paying my co-founder that monthly trial that, you know, I've talked about before. Uh, getting the app icon design. Just again, typical startup business costs. None of this was unexpected. I'm fine with this number, but that is the current number that CreatorView is starting out at. However, for me, the true cost of CreatorView is much, much greater because it lies in opportunity cost. Now you may have noticed, I haven't really been putting out a ton of videos over the past few months, haven't been putting out new courses, and that's how I make my income, how I make my living right now. Uh, you know, when I put out regular YouTube tutorials, that's pushing traffic to my courses. So that's, you know, income generating when I put out a YouTube tutorial. And then also creating new courses. Just for context, when I create a new course, uh, that new course earns about 100 grand within the first 12 months, um, and that's per course. So I think I put out my last course in like, or I launched it in May of 2021. Here we are in February of 2022. So coming up on a year of no new courses. So again, I'm watching like my income slowly dwindle away. Still doing all right, but uh, yeah, that's, there's a lot of opportunity costs in focusing on creator view full time. So sure, 9,000 in actual like out of pocket costs, but man, the opportunity cost is, uh, is pretty, pretty big. Um, cause I'm pretty much leaving my course business out to die. I'm just neglecting it. And I'm kind of, uh, in a race against time. You know, can I have creator view start generating revenue? Again, like right, my income's going down and down and down every month because I'm not putting out new videos, not putting out new courses, you know, it's just slowly trickling away. But can creator view start to come up uh, to make up for that over the next like year or two? Because I think on this pace, my course business will be dead from neglect in probably about a year or two. So uh, I guess the clock is ticking. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm risking my life here. Worst case scenario for me, I can get a senior iOS developer job, probably making good money somewhere. So, I mean, that, that does sound horrible getting a job <laughs> after, what, two and a half years now of kind of being on my own and really getting accustomed to this lifestyle. It would suck. But again, not the end of the world if all this blows up in my face and I just got to get a job somewhere. Now let's talk about the post-launch roadmap, or at least the immediate post-launch roadmap. So what I'm shifting my focus on is the Mac app 100%. Like I mentioned a little bit ago, that's a vital piece of this product. So now that the iPad is launched, I'm 100% on the Mac app. Well, not 100% because any fires that pop up, I may need to jump in and put out. But for the most part, day to day, I'm all in on the Mac app. That has been an adventure. Um, I have a whole video coming up in this series dedicated to you know, getting the Mac app up and running and how that's been going. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Uh, while my co-founder is focusing on the iPad app. Uh, so we're kind of taking a two-pronged approach, right? I'm taking the Mac app. He's uh, working on the iPad app with you know just squashing any bugs that pop up, uh, improving features, adding functionality, just really polishing it and making the existing feature set really uh, just solid and, and good and, and pleasant, uh, if you will. We've been spending a lot of time on like animations and UI, making it look really good. Like you can see some of these chart animations, I think they look great. So that's what he's doing uh, and also adding new features, right? The rolling 12 months feature that I talked about in the last video, that's getting put in. Um, and again, I'm focusing on the Mac app. So hopefully we converge in a couple months, right? The Mac app is done, it's in a great spot. Uh, we've had a couple months of polishing and making the iPad out that much better. That converges, and then I would consider CreativeView officially launched, and the marketing machine starts going, and we'll see what happens. Now I want to touch on some thoughts on pricing, um, because I assume, right, this is the official launch video. I assume some of you out there will, will get curious and go download the app and check it out. Uh, so I want to talk about where I think the app is in relation to that $20 a month price and how I see things playing out over the next year or two. So as of right now, this MVP, this initial launch, and again, I've been talking about this all throughout this series, you know, it's the minimum viable product. It's, it's very, it doesn't do a lot. It does enough, but not a lot. So right now, that $20 a month is probably steep for what it does. But over time, as we add functionality, as the Mac app comes out, and eventually the iPhone app as well. So now you're on three platforms, everything syncs seamlessly. Uh, also throughout this time, we're adding more data visualizations, more features, making the app more robust, right? We're gonna constantly improve this product. So we're gonna climb up this chart, right? The equilibrium point of $20 a month right in the middle, right now it's not worth that. The two people that would buy that are people that are insanely rich and don't care about money, 
or people that are very desperate for a tool like this. That's where we're at right now in the creator view like pricing. But again, we're gonna move up this chart as we make the product better. Eventually we'll hit that equilibrium point where for the typical uh, user, $20 a month is fine. And then eventually after a couple years, we'll pass that $20 a month to where it's a no brainer. Like, of course I'll pay $20 a month for this. This app is amazing. And again, I think it's gonna take three to five years to get there, it's a journey, but the goal is to get up into that area where like $20 a month is, is nothing. And for you econ nerds out there, that's called a consumer surplus. So that's where Creator View is at. Right now we are officially on the iPad App Store, the very first version, it's available for download. Go check it out if you want. Uh, but the journey is just beginning as I've mentioned.